Clark, roll call, please. Each member is acknowledging that they are attending the meeting via Zoom and that they are located in Wayne County, Michigan, unless otherwise stated when I call your name. Commissioner Colleen? Right here. Commissioner Dobb? Here. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Here. Commissioner Knizek? Here. Commissioner Basham? Here. You have a quorum present. Item. Next item. Chair's remarks? Uh, I have none. C, approve the June 9th, 2021 meeting minutes. Move Can I get a motion? I got a motion from Commissioner Coleman. I support second, it. Second from Commissioner Colleen. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. Next item, Madam Clerk. Item one, and an unfinished business, a discussion on the fiscal year 2020 Wayne County single audit findings and plan corrective action by the applicable departments and elected officials. Yeah, well, I'd like to uh, invite and uh, welcome uh, um, Ms. Cora, her staff and her guest. And Ms. Cora, uh, you have the floor. Thank you. Yeah, you got to unmute, Mercy. She's being efficient. Go ahead. Thank you. Marcy Cora, Auditor General. I wanted to check to see if our representatives from the Treasurer's Office are here. They did confirm they were going to attend. I know Management and Budget is here. Is anybody from mm -hmm. the Treasurer's Office online? Madam Clerk, can you unmute everybody to see if there's anybody from the Treasurer's Office here? As I will unmute everyone right now. Thank you. Is there anybody from the treasurer's office that's here? <clears throat> Quite frankly, that's unacceptable. <clears throat> if they said they were going to be here at this meeting, somebody should be here. I see a 224 phone number, but I'm not sure who it is. Is there anybody from Treasurer's office that's here? Didn't we uh, postpone this item last time because yes. nobody from Treasurer's office is here? Yes, and we confirmed and they indicated that they would have a representative at this meeting. I'll send a letter to the Treasurer, uh, quite frankly, and uh, Mr. Sabri needs to uh, be responsible for his department. So uh, I would suggest that we... Uh, um, because they're not here and can't answer questions uh, that we move on to the next item and we will definitely have them here next time, one way or the sure. other. If I got a subpoena on my will to get them here. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, yes, uh, uh, Commissioner Clean. Uh, to refresh my memory, because it's been a few meetings now, which of the um, findings are still outstanding and are they all with regards to the treasurer? Yes, the ones that are outstanding are five, eight, nine, and 10. Three of them are strictly the treasurer's office and one is management and budget and the treasurer's office. Okay. And well, this won't go away just because they don't show up. So we will definitely, uh, I will have my staff write a letter to uh, the treasurer mm -hmm. and, and uh, we will try to get this back on the agenda with them at the meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, because it was John Vier that acknowledged that somebody would be here. Would it be appropriate, Mr. Chair, to have a pass for the day motion? Uh, it certainly would be appropriate. Uh, so, Commissioner uh, Colleen, could you? I, I make that motion that we pass for the day. Keep it on the agenda. Could we get support from maybe support. Commissioner Dobb? So it's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Yeah. All those in uh, favor? Second. Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. Okay. Um, uh, Ms. Cora, can we proceed? The next yes, item. we can. The my three Thank you. Jackets and ties, and I'm in a lonely Okay, the I'm next tired. item is going to be the presentation. Is she okay? Go on, somebody mute. needs, somebody needs to mute. Yeah, okay. Next go item. Ahead. The next item is going to be the presentation from. 
the Department of Management and Budget on the results of the CAFR, and Yogesh does have a presentation, so Sherelle, could I share the screen with Yogesh? Okay, thank you. You're able to share screen whenever you're ready. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, my name is Yogesh Kisani, and I'm a deputy CFO from uh, uh, Management and Budget, Finance Reporting. I have a guest with me, um, obviously uh, our new director of finance reporting, David Graham. I'll let him introduce to himself and Michael Bridges, our uh, assistant director of finance reporting, as well as our CFO, UE Newsom out there. Well, Yogesh, do you want me to do this screen sharing or were you going to? Uh, go ahead and do it, okay. please. Sorry. Okay, ready? Yes. Again, thank you, uh, entire audit committee for uh, giving us an opportunity to present our 2020 op for highlights. So we don't pronounce anymore what older term, which used to be CAFR. Mm -hmm. And we'll explain that in our next slide. So it's called going forward is called SCFR, not a CAFR. Okay. So if you can move to the next slide, please. Can we maximize the slideshow? Uh, sure at the it's... top, at, at the top on the left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With like a TV. Um, you think like the slideshow. Like yeah. Like slideshow. On the left, it's called a, like a picture of TV. If you can click that on the left panel, go keep See, going. Got it. Yep. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mars. Yes. Here's the GFOA and SB as announced, and um, I'll let you read for uh, like a few seconds. And we are glad that Wayne County actually adopted this term earlier. Okay. Yeah, J just wanted to uh, have a little education, you know, why we are changing the term. So, okay, so here's the topic uh, we are going to cover, obviously a fund balance, um, again, highlights. And um, just we wanted to highlight as everybody must have read in the Detroit news and everywhere, you know, uh, in county did get an um, a, A3 A grade rating with a positive outlook from uh, Moody's um, with a very good description, you know, what so far as collectively Wayne County has been doing uh, with the cooperation of commissioners and CEO's office. So, so just wanted to highlight that. Uh, we'll go through COVID-19 impact, uh, our expectation, uh, 2021 expectation, and obviously it's almost a nine month and this is coming based on 2021 budget when we did it back then in um, you know, almost seven, eight months back. So, and then again, going for expense, general fund expenses, revenue, head count and uh, so forth. Uh, can you move to the next slide, please? Okay. Uh, again, general fund, Fund balance, overall fund balance increased 9.4 million over the prior year. And at the end of the fiscal year, general fund was almost 1.192 million and 157 point that was an assigned, which I think last year was, I believe so was 135 was an unassigned. And we'll see that in um, next couple of slides actually. I was, Special slides at the end comparing five years of uh, fund balances. So here's the you know how fund balance has been um, you know kind of a breakup of the fund balance. 
non-spendable. Mostly non-spendable is uh, most of the prepaid and inventory and sometimes interfund payable if any fund is in a deficit and so forth. And restricted fund balance, as the name indicates, restricted you know, for capital projects, road. Again, this is all M.51 money for the roads. Debt service, those are a mandatory spending for our debt service payment. Um, and hospitalization, again, that is by state statute that we have to keep that money. Um, spatial revenue uh, fund purposes, some of the other restrictions are there, so that we have to keep that one. Then going back to an assigned fund balance, 147 committed fund balance is again, it's a third circuit court that we are trying to uh, keep it a separate. And again, we do report third circuit court as a part of our general fund um, in a financial uh, statement. But I just wanted to keep it a little separate as a visible. Unassigned fund balance, 156. Um, can you move to the next slide, please? So here's a significant fluctuation uh, at the high level. Uh, Marcy, I can, um, can we focus it? It's just, I can't see. It's just, it's just out of focus, this picture. No, because it's yeah, showing on my side. Mine. I just. It's clear on mine. Yeah. At least it was. Okay. Yeah, it's clear. I. That's okay. I, I can read from my other screen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. So these are significant, um, obviously general fund revenue decreased by, you know, almost a 48 million, which is again, a no brainer. We all know because of the COVID uh, parking tax, parking tax, uh, other services went down, uh, PPT recovery and some other things from the state even. We were, um, you know, not getting it, even though we did not get our August month uh, state revenue sharing even. We did get it in a different form, so to speak, but again, that's not part of a general fund, general purpose. So these are all description. Uh, overall, property tax revenue went by 6.3. Uh, charges for service revenue, 18.5 million. Again, that's part of, um, um, some of them are uh, airport parking tax, which uh, almost we lost like a 17, 18 million. So. Uh, I got listed out later on on that one. Um, sheriff courts, 34 million. Uh, so some of them are expenditure wide went down because of the courts were closed. You know, none of the services were provided. Um, so that's one of the reasons. Government expenditure, 4.3. Again, we all know because of the shutdown and COVID related activities. So, um, the last bullet or last before big safety expenditure, $52 million really shut down. And that's because of the COVID-19 fund, right? So because of the, we spent from a general fund, then we reimbursed from our COVID fund because that's what the, obviously the Fed has given us money under CARES Act for our public safety and so forth. So that's why uh, when we reimburse our, to a general fund, so that's public safety expenditure in a general fund went down. Okay. Uh, can I jump in for one sure. quick second before we go to a different page? Please. Uh, one of the things that I noticed is the sheriff's uh, money to the courts is down 34.1 million. Correct? Uh, yeah. And we've had discussion about, uh, about these uh, secondary road patrols and other things that actually bring revenue into the county. So uh, in a later discussion with my colleagues, I just wanted to uh, highlight the fact that, you know, when they're not there, they're not producing the revenue, which is, is significant. So I'll leave it alone, but uh, it's for a later discussion, but I have seen that on there and I just wanted to call attention to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Please yeah. proceed. Mm -hmm. um, the last bullet transfer out, uh, obviously some of the transfer out last year compared to this year was a little less. Uh, right, so we had to transfer 50 million for the COVID related and some of the transfer out is different because in 2019, we had another transfer out for our parking lot for the CJC jail compared to 
uh, this year. So that's why there's a no, why there's a no fluctuation in transfer out, what I wanted to point out there. Mm -hmm. Can you move to the next slide, please? So here, basically a backup of why there's a significant um, changes in the revenue. As you can see, state share, um, again, revenue sharing almost went down by 12.1 million, uh, which is literally our last payment, I think at the month of August, uh, like we get every other month, February, every other even month, February, April, June, and August. And because of the COVID hit, we did not get the even um, August payment. Having said, state did send us some other millions of dollars, but again, that was for different purpose, wasn't part of a general fund. So, which we'll see uh, later on in the slide. Again, expenditure rate, 20 million portion came from a county clerk. So these are again, why some of the expenditure reduction, uh, as you can see, management budget, uh, non-departmental again, we went on a furlough from month of April, I believe so, yeah. April to all the way up to the end of September. So some of the expenditure did get reduced. Um, again, public safety expenditure, as I just indicated, um, because of the COVID. That's why general fund expenditure did go down. And transfer out budget, again, increase um, because of 50, 50 million was part of the COVID fund transfer. So we're just trying to say the significant even these were changes. Huh? Actual revenue, again, 52.9 million under the budget. Uh, some of the grants billings were not there because of the, again, COVID, we were not, no, none of the things were going on back then. So you can see some of the number why it's going down state grants because we were not able to bill. Uh, charges for services, again, same issue. Um, you know, either we were not getting it or we were getting very late. Uh, even state, I believe so state is really behind even for the current year in processing uh, uh, so many things. They are literally behind five to six months and we are continuously in touch with the state um, inquiring about our billing and any other, any other payments that due to us. Judicial expenditure again, as I said, because of the courts were closed. Uh, general government expenditures were under the budget, obviously because of the furlough and some other savings. And obviously, you know, we have a lot of budgeted position and we are not able to hire. So obviously those are, some of those are under the budget. Uh, public safety, we already talked about that. Um, can we go to the next slide, please, Marcy? Uh, yeah, this is our debt portion, and we always want to highlight our debt portion because, you know, Wayne County, we are proud to say we are way under our debt margin limit, what's allowed. Like a person, we can issue a debt of like a $5.4 billion or something, but we are only like $800 million and so far. So that's something always we want to highlight. And this was really one of the factor in a rating agency too, when they looked at that. Definitely, this was a much more impressive. And we are not, you know, in the near future, we are not going to uh, issue any debt at least. So as again, you can see this uh, at the end, uh, Again, Moody's investor, we just wanted to highlight again, you know, we went from BAA1 to A3, which is really this grade, uh, we can significantly get a very low interest rate. Mm -hmm. This is a COVID-19 uh, COVID pandemic impact that what, how we describe why certain things were less. Again, county received 18.2 million federal pass through. So that's what it is. We did not get a revenue sharing for the month of August, but however, state gave us an 18 million. But again, that was part of COVID related things. So obviously that 
We do have extra money, yes, but that's not for general fund, general purpose. You know, that goes to the CARES Act money. So that's, we just wanted to highlight uh, as far as state aid, how that came up. And again, this is a COVID-19 pandemic event as I uh, enumerated earlier about parking tax. As you can see, the budget, it was a 22 million. We just received 11 million only. And, but on the other side, good news is, I think, you know, uh, airport traffic has picked up. In fact, I made two to three trips. Uh, I can see the airport traffic has picked up a lot. Uh, hopefully this year, uh, we may have a little better result compared to last year. Same as a tourist excise tax. Again, that's related to um, tourists. And uh, that's almost a $3 million less compared to uh, last year. Can you move to the next slide? Yeah. And these are again, pandemic impacts, salary and other expenses. Uh, we just wanted to make sure, you know, we highlight that uh, how expenses did go down or up because of the pandemic. Uh, because of the CARE Act, yes, we had a lot of money, the cash flow is there. Uh, uh, obviously it did affect the general fund, uh, not the COVID-19 CARES Act funding. Uh, and the last one on COVID-19 response assistance, what we are trying to say, how much we have received so far and what we are anticipating, um, 339 million um, that we are anticipating. And I do believe we did receive some of them and administration, um, you know, working diligently along with CFO and um, executive office for uh, various different programs. Uh, to allocate that money. These are uh, budget book uh, things and I would uh, probably, if you is on the line, I will let him speak uh, since our uh, budget related stuff. Hey, Yui. Yui. Okay, I can still go through at this base on this is what I was trying to say. Be based then in March, this 2021 budget was done in around um, last year, right? And we were still going through a pandemic. And back there, so those these are the numbers from there at this point. And I think this is still true at this point. Uh, DTRF, yes, still we are related to DTRF that we are expecting the same amount, 30 million. Um, Again, county have a general fund, 371 million. That's part of that has general fund set aside. And again, revenue sharing, usually we have a 52 million, but I think as you can see, because of last year we did receive, so we budgeted only 40 million at this point um, because of what we are expecting due to COVID, we might not get it. So obviously we, we're on a conservative side back then when we were budgeting 2021. Uh, these are the chart again, giving a um, nice, uh, you know, kind of display how our expenses and other things works, how majority is still, as you can see, um, recreation and culture, general government is still always in a major routine expenditure. And, Public safety, public works, those are, and health and welfare. I think those are four majors still there. So. Can we move to the next slide, uh, please? So these are our revenue source. Um, as you can see, our property tax still. And this kind of, as you can see, because of the COVID operating grants, almost a 41% and property tax, 41% revenue sales. Those still are the major sources. Charges for services did go down uh, because of the pandemic. We were not providing services and so forth. So, um, so that's just a depiction of in a chart. Uh, can you move to the next slide, please? All right. This is our head count. And as we said, budgeted, as you can see, almost 4,000 budgeted versus actual was roughly 3,000. So we had a FD variance of almost on 1,000. As you can see, administration 
uh, you know, is working hard to hire folks. But because of the COVID and because of the how, you know, federal government is giving money to the folks too, due to unemployment and some other, I think we are still, there's just some challenge in hiring um, still. Uh, so that's the hall of variance. And I think it's 2021 budgeted FTE. Obviously we did reduce some of, not, not too much, maybe on 60 or 70 FTE did go down. Um, but this is a true picture, so to speak, of our budgeted FTE versus actual FTE. Yes, we are short-handed, absolutely, yes. But we are working towards that. Uh, this is just a comparison of two, and again, I think uh, from previous slides, we talked about how property tax revenue did go down by 6 million. Next one again, 55 and 44, like a revenue sharing again, 11 million. Uh, I'll touch some of the points. Uh, federal grant, yes. Uh, state grants, 24, 22, not too much of difference. Uh, charges for services, again, these are the major one, as I talked about, parking tax, you know, um, other services that we were not able to provide or render, that's why it's going down. Um, so revenue did go down, general fund, but at the same point, expenditure did go down a little bit higher than that. So I think we were able to get to a better fund balance at this point. Um, we were able to sell some um, capital assets, I believe so, 511 Woodward or some other, we were able to sell that some. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, there's a more detail we covered in up front and here's the five years of uh, historical fund balances of this. So as you can see, since last five years, we keep on growing around fund balance, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 almost. So at this point we have almost 192 million of our general fund balance and out of them on the sign is 157 uh, million too. Um, is there any slide out there, Marcy? Um, is any questions? That was uh, the last any one. Oh, okay, any commissioners, any questions, I'll be glad to either I or um, if UE has anything on the budget side, we'll be glad to uh, respond. If I can't respond, I'll take the questions and I'll definitely I will get back to you. Thank anything you for uh, listening. Any commissioners have any questions, comments? Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Clay. Tried to get that hand up. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I have a couple actually. Uh, sure. uh, Mr. Uh, Jasani, thank you very much for the presentation. I do have a few <laughs> questions. Sure. Uh, I see there was a 30.5 million coming over from the delinquent tax revolving fund. Uh, and that, uh, what is the history of that? Is that number going, it should be going down. Um, what's the trajectory of the money coming over from the delinquent tax revolving fund? Commi so, Commissioner Colleen, if I may, if I may, Commissioner Colleen. Please. Um, thank you, so, sorry to interrupt you, but that's um, that's in the budget that, that has been presented to commission, staff is going through it, which we'll start reviewing, you know, towards the end of the month. Um, in that budget recommendation, the CEO's recommended budget um, discontinues this transfer after fiscal 21. Um, we've worked okay. with the treasurer because of the Raffaelli case, because of everything that's going on with, um, with uh, delinquent tax, um, yeah. and delinqu delinquent tax payments and foreclosure with this fund. Um, we don't have confidence that this, that this uh, transfer is gonna continue in the foreseeable future. Okay, that's good news. Uh, but the thirty point okay. five—that's down significantly, right? From three, four, five, six years ago. That's correct. I don't have the numbers in front of me. I can get those numbers um, to okay. you. Um, I appreciate that, Mr. Yeah, Newsom. yeah so, I will get those me, two numbers to you sometime yeah. before the week is over, just so you can yeah. see the history. But it has gone down. I think the peak was right at a hundred million. Um, yeah, yeah. Foreclosures, right. but then it's dropped. Obviously, with foreclosure volume. 
And then mm-hmm. now it's going to drop even further down to zero because of the right. Out- I got you know, a lot of people have been paying attention to that number, uh, mm-hmm. right? Citizens, um, but but a can couple I, of uh, go uh, ahead, Tim, Mr. Let me just jump in on that for a quick second. But as that DTRF goes down, uh, houses are selling at a record rate, and and the pop up tax occurs when you purchase new homes. So yeah. as we looked into this before. The revenue, even though the DTRF is going down, the revenue from taxable properties should be going up to counter that, correct? You, you would expect that, but remember, Headley, Headley dampens mm-hmm. that growth. Mm-hmm. So and It only you know, dampens it. Let me stop you on that. It only mm-hmm. dampens it if you continue to live in the house. But when you purchase new homes, is what I'm talking about. That's fair. Then, mm-hmm. then you have the pop-up tax. That's, That's fair. So Headley does not apply to new homes being bought. That's, that's, that's I completely agree, but it does, when I, my point is, unless you have a, a huge influx of uh, huge influx of new home purchases, um, we do have that in Wayne County. That. We have that in Wayne County. Actually, uh, it's getting harder and harder to purchase a new home. Uh, builders, they're building like crazy in, in uh, Down River, and I know in Western Wayne they're doing some stuff too. Uh, but so Headley doesn't apply there. But we did a deep dive into this. And as, mm-hmm. as the DTRF goes down, uh, we were expecting the income from he- from taxable property and also new property TV. go up. Yes. A- agreed. So, I definitely okay. agree with you. Okay. Um, okay. And of course, obviously you see that in the, in the levy um, and obviously there's a delay in the levy, but I do agree with you principally. Yes, I do agree with you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just trying to make it more. Uh, Commissioner Clean, please. Yeah, continue. thank you, Mr. Chair. And I was on the same kind of point. You pointed out 6.3 million decrease in property tax revenue, and you referenced Headley. Is this the same discussion here? The pop-up tax—that's what caused the 6.3 million decline in uh, property tax revenue. Uh, I, yeah, there's also a, yes, that more or less is correct. Generally speaking, I'm speaking high level. No, I got you, Mr. Newsom. Anything else on that? It's not just Headley. It's also uh, Prop A. Prop A was yes. it? Yes, yeah. that is correct. Prop A as well. So how, how are they influencing this? Aside well, from what the, you've already discussed. So so obviously we, did, we didn't see any increases last, last year. You would expect it to see, you know, from 19 to 20, you would expect it to see because of the, um, because of the increases in taxable value, Along with the decrease in the DTRF, you would expect to see a, a, a. I would I would have argued a higher pop, but you did not see that higher pop because of Prop A and Headley, um, even though you saw the drop in the DTRF. That was my point. Okay, all right. A couple other dollar questions. Um, inpatient hospitalization is that uh, folks leaving the jail to go to ho- uh, our residents at the jail leaving the jail to go to hospitals uh, for treatment? Is that what that is? Inpatient hospitalization, 24.3 million. Could you go back to the slide? Um, right. Go ahead, Yogesh. Go yeah, ahead. that's the one. Right. So, yeah, these are the, yeah, money is, yeah, that is correct. That's indigent health care. Yeah, that's for this one. Okay. For, yeah. Well, I'd like to know the trend on that, too. I won't take that sure. time today, but hopefully mm-hmm. that's going down. We put a lot of effort uh, mm-hmm. into that. Um, right. So... Uh, and then the other comment, and I think it's this slide too, uh, the second last bullet point under committed fund balance of 14 million. I think you said that was uh, kind of reserved for the third circuit court. Yeah. You, you, do you understand? Uh, yeah. Could you go back? To, well, I have another question on that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Are we still under that? I think it was a five year agreement to provide a steady source of funding to the Third Circuit Court. Do we still have an agreement in place like that with Third Circuit? Last year, you all approved a, a one-year modification um, before, and it's up September 30th, and, my, and our goal, um, working with court counsel and also with Third Circuit Court, is that the second modification to that agreement, which will, lat- which will fund them for another year, um, will be before you, hopefully in August. Oh, so we're kind of on a year by year right now with that. Yeah, what, what we've been doing is doing extensions to that agreement in order to comply with the settlement. Yeah. Well, as always, uh, hello, Lansing. Pay for your own court, please, and quit kicking it down on us to do. 
I'll give um, you a ride to Lansing so we could ha have a discussion. I'm more than happy. I, I would love to have that conversation. Anytime, Mr. Newsom, that sticks in my craw. Uh, Marcy, if you could please share this PowerPoint with all commissioners. Um, I also see the parking tax and tourist tax is also down, of course, right? Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. a surprise, but that is the funding source for uh, indigent health care in Wayne County. Uh, so do we know how much, uh, how much revenue we're going to have or that we're going to lose uh, for providing indigent health care in the county? Um, in the 21 budget, if you go back to that slide, um, projected that loss, I don't have the number, I think the slide had it, but we are projecting a recovery of the airport parking tax back, not to the full 22 million. I think the number yeah. is like 15, if I remember correctly in right. fiscal 22. So we do predict yeah, yeah. a partial recovery, right. but not a mm -hmm. full recovery. Well, okay, yeah, I think they we just had our biggest day almost ever for air travel uh, in yeah. the United States. So that's going to go back up, but uh, my hope don't is you're worry. Right. the Delta variant will drive that back down. But do we know how much we're losing this year as a result of that for indigent healthcare? I can get don't that. I can, get that, I, yeah, I can get that number for you. Right. I would I the spark, spark. You just go and do a door shot right. on it. And my last, uh, my last question is, um, you know, you were showing us the full time equivalents and what we budgeted for and what we've actually done. So we're at about three thousand employees right now. Uh, one thing that I would find very helpful as a policymaker is to look at this year over year. See, we usually see it as well, this is 20 and this is what we think we're going to do next year. Uh, but I would like to see year over year, maybe over a five year period, really how many, how much has the prosecutors lost? How much has the county clerks lost? How much uh, in our Department of Public Services are our jobs down? Uh, every audit, we discuss the lack of uh, being able to hire employees because our budget is strangled. And that is certainly uh, very understandable, but I think also for policy, if we could see this year over year, maybe for the last five years, and, and so we as a commission can really see and, and kind of track what's happened to uh, our employees. So when we have this discussion about being uh, not enough uh, employees and whatnot, uh, I think it'll provide a better context for that conversation. So I, I would like to see that. Uh, year over year, how many actual employees. And I think this is a great chart in these categories. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, Mr. Chair, thank you very much for giving me the floor. Okay, thank you. Uh, any uh, other commissioners have comments or questions? Okay, moving right along. Uh, please uh, proceed. Excuse me, Chair. Uh, excuse me, Chair. Uh, Chairperson. Um, sure. Th this, this is Michael Bridges. Um, I just received a call from LaShonda Thomas from the treasurer's office. She apologizes. She's at the door. She wants to be able to come in so she can address the, uh, uh, the items that was on the agenda for the finding. All right. Um, okay, we can do that. Uh, and can somebody from the... She's yeah. in now. I'm okay, in okay, now. Thanks. Thank you. And, and uh, again, I must apologize um, for the lateness of my arrival um, for the meeting. I apologize. Um, so I apologize. Sorry. Well, my my thing is, uh, is yes. chair of the committee, um, the somebody from the treasurer's office should have been here at the last meeting and they didn't show up. So when I get a, a repeat finding, <laughs> I, I, funny, I should say repeat finding. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not taken very well. So, you know, we do have some questions and and uh, we do want to deal with some issues that the treasurer's office have. So to that okay. point, uh, welcome. And uh, we're not trying to kill a messenger here, but also- No, uh, no, Ms. that's fine. Ms. Cora, please proceed. We'll go back to the single audit findings that were related to the treasurer's office. And the first one is related to the treasurer's office and the Department of Management and Budget. This was finding 2020-05. The condition was the county did not have procedures in place to ensure that all bank accounts were fully reconciled to the general ledger, that the reconciling items could be supported, and that reconciliations were re performed and reviewed timely. The recommendation was the county should develop a bank reconciliation process involving both the Department of Management and Budget and the Treasurer's Office and ensure bank reconciliations are prepared and reviewed timely. 
Okay, and uh, this Sarah, was a repeat you, finding. Would you like to comment to that? Sure. Um, so when we started, um, when I actually started over in the WCTO, we were kind of like at the mid-year point for reconciliations for this particular audit year. And since then, we have put procedures in place to ensure that reconciliations are done in a timely manner and someone is actually reviewing those. So we've been working diligently with the limited staff that we actually have in order to make certain that we are preparing those in a more timely manner and reconciling and identifying any of those items that were considered unreconcilable and actually finding a place for them. So we are working um, diligently to make certain that we are preparing those on a timely basis. And I believe over the past year and a half, you know, we've been short staff and we have a lot of the reconciliations for this upcoming audit year are, have been done and reviewed. So we put processes and procedures in place upon my arrival to correct this. So this is going to be a repeat because again, I came like in the middle of this fiscal year that we're looking at. Okay, so is this being done monthly and, and mm -hmm. uh, it is being done monthly? Yes, sir. They're they're done monthly. Now there okay. are some um, some out departments that prepare their reconciliations that we're working with, who um, have not been as diligent because of limited staff. So we're um, just being a little patient with them to kind of help them along uh, with this process. But again. Um, because of staff limitations, some of those departments haven't completed their reconciliations in a timely manner, but we are in touch with them just to kind of move them along to get them done. Okay, and I have one more question for you, if I may. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there a pretty good communication between M&B and the treasurer's office? Or is there a lack of that? And that could be causing some of the delays. Um, no, I believe we have good communication. I don't know. I call Huey, like I call Michael. I talk to Yogesh on a regular basis, but I think that um, the lines of communications have um, actually improved um, since I onboarded with the, um, the office, with the treasurer's office, and we're doing uh, a lot better of communicating, not only on bank reconciliations, but if I have a question about a treatment of a particular accounting transaction, I'm talking with MNB just to make certain that it makes sense. So we do have open lines of communication. And that makes sense. And thank you. You're welcome. And I may say, Commissioner Chair, uh, yes, I uh, do concur with uh, the Sandra Thomas. Absolutely true. We are working together. Uh, some of the challenges are new applications at the treasurer's office um, and obviously sort of staff. So, but overall we are working together. Thank you. Okay. Moving right along. Uh, the next one is 2020-08. The condition was the county did not have procedures in place to ensure that the undistributed property taxes were properly reconciled at year end. The recommendation was the county should develop a process to ensure the undistributed property taxes are reconciled timely and accurately. Uh, and then also, as I understand it, some of this is undisputed. Uh, it goes to other authorities. Is that being resolved? Yes, yes, we are resolving this. And again, um, I hate to <laughs> repeat the same thing, but um, just to give you background, I came in and now um, upon my arrival into the office, we are actually now developing new, new processes and procedures to make certain that we are reconciling. So some of this, uh, this information actually goes back a couple years on this finding. And um, we are actually working to make certain that this is reconciled at year end. Okay, so next year we won't be talking about this, correct? Nope, nope, you shouldn't talk about that. Okay, moving right along. Ms. Next Cora. was 2020-09. The condition was the county did not have procedures in place to ensure that the delinquent tax receivable balances were properly reconciled at year end. And the recommendation was the county should develop a process to ensure that the delinquent tax receivable accounts are reconciled timely and accurately. And would you like to respond? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So and actually on this particular one, this was something that I actually found <laughs> when preparing the reconciliation for the auditors. I found a mistake that had not been um, uncovered in the year before that actually, because it's a balance sheet item, it covered it rolls over from year to year. So this was something that I brought to their attention. So 
um, we're in the, we did an entry um, to correct it, so we shouldn't have this finding. So this is actually, it comes from the fiscal year 2019 where something wasn't in the proper category that neither the auditors or the staff found. So that's where this is coming from. And again, we're doing a deep dive into the accounts to make sure we understand what's included in there, what shouldn't be included, and making adjustments so that it's accurate. Well, we appreciate that. Uh, so, Ms. Cora? And the last one is 2020-10. The county did not have procedures in place to ensure that the unallocated cash receipts balance was properly reconciled at year end. The recommendation was that the county should develop a process to ensure that unallocated cashier receipts account is reconciled timely and accurately. Yep. And again, we're working on those debt accounts and making certain that they're reconciled and moving cash out uh, appropriately. So uh, just to sort of give a macro, uh, I guess, uh, question that. So, mm -hmm. um, so you agree with all the findings from the Auditor, Auditor General's office? Absolutely, I do. And we're working to resolve that. And that's what Absolutely. this is all about. Yep. So we thank yep. you. Rodney mm -hmm. King comes into play. <laughs> Can't we all just roll along together? So that's good. It's good working together. Thank yep. you. Absolutely. I appreciate it. You're Ms. welcome. Cora? Ms. Cora? And that concludes our presentations. Wow, thank you. Uh, anything further by any commissioners? Yes, Mr. Oh, Chair. Uh, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Kleen. Thank you. Uh, to the Auditor General, Ms. Cora, we're going to see a corrective action plan now uh, for the uh, single audit. Well, these are actually the findings from the external auditors. So when the external auditors perform their audit of oh, this year, they will go back over them. That's that's right. And yeah. we really won't get any communication on this until next year's single audit, correct? Correct. Correct. That's, okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I move to receive and file this? Okay, you can, uh, Commissioner Colleen, if I can get support. Support. Okay, uh, moved by Commissioner Colleen, supported by Commissioner uh, Coleman. Uh, you, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All, all those opposed? That was a slow eye from Commissioner Dobb, but I'll accept it. Uh, okay, uh, the ayes have it. Next item, Madam Clerk. Such other matters as may be properly submitted before the uh, committee. A uh, point, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, Clean. I think we have to dispose of the, not the CAP or the ACFR, whatever we're calling it these days. I, I think we need to receive and file that and forward it to the full commission, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So is that a motion? I believe as is that's what that's the the needed action right now right mm -hmm. sure if Cheryl could correct me i don't believe we have an action item because they were just presentations no. correct these are two uh, presentations yes okay we're getting in front of it so uh we won't move okay all time. right thank okay. you mr chair for the clarification all right thank you. is there anything further from commissioners okay um next item madam clerk are there any other uh, such other matters? There are none. Any, anybody from the public would like to comment? Anybody from the public would like to comment? Can you unmute your phones, please? I mean, uh, the Wi Fi. The lines have been unmuted. Okay. Uh, it looks like Colleen's still muted. Okay, now I saw. Okay, anybody? Uh, have any further comments? In oh, your dreams, please. Mr. Chair. Any further comments? Okay. Uh, next item, Madam Clerk. Adjournment. Is there a no, motion? Both. Motion I'm for supporting that. Commissioner Coleman and support from Commissioner Clean. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Ayes have it. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.